Hello, lovies. So, I want to talk about what I consider be, to be the five areas of wellness. So, the five areas of wellness are the main areas in which it I have found to be beneficial to create goals, plans, structure in these areas for myself and for my clients. When you talk about each area, it touches on different key parts of our life, of our world, that when they're out of whack, it can make other things out of whack also. So this, um, all five of these areas work together. There's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of cause and effect. And so really examining each of these areas, seeing the needs that are there and making plans accordingly can be really beneficial. So with um, the first area, it is nutrition and exercise. So these are foundational because when you are fueling your body correctly and you are getting more movement, that can make a huge difference in your mental state. It can make a difference in the way that you're able to keep the goals that you have set, the way that you're able to have energy to do the things that you wanna do and the way that you can have mental clarity to be able to focus on the things. Nutrition just simply means finding what works for you and sticking to it, not allowing stress or other reasons to get the best of you and cause you to veer off plan. It is um, different for everyone. Everybody has different needs and uh, things that work for them don't work for them because you not only want to find what works for your body, for instance, like eating wheat doesn't really do me any favors, so I try to avoid it. Um, but that's not the case for everyone. Not everyone has those uh, issues. I can feel it in my hips and my back when I've eaten too much. I can feel the inflammation, but not everybody does. does. Um, so there's different things that you need to know as far as that goes about yourself, but then also what you like and what works. So just because a diet or a plan will work for you doesn't mean that it works for you. Just because it will help you to get healthier physically and lose weight doesn't mean that it's enjoyable enough for you to do it for long term. And so you definitely want to make sure that you find something that fits both of these. And often that means compromising. It means accepting that, you know, at 40, I'm probably not going to be you know, what I was when I was in college, or I'm not going to look like somebody else on TV. Um, that's okay. It doesn't mean that you have to throw in the towel or just give up. It just means accepting that to get to that, whatever goal it may be, would call, would cre would mean having to commit to something a lot harder, a lot more time consuming, whatever it may be. Um, than what you really can at this time. So finding the magic answer to fit all of those is, is truly key. Um, the next area of wellness is personal time and self-care. So personal time, defined by me, is the time that you, how you use your spare time, your extra time, the time that you have in either the mornings or the evenings or the weekends, are you, you know, are you being intentional with your rest? Are you allowing yourself to rest? Or are you filling every second of that time with something? Are you, when you are resting, are you thinking about all the dishes and the laundry list of things that you need to do? Or are you allowing yourself to really just rest and binge watch that new show that you like? When you are, excuse me, sorry, speaking of rest, when you, um, are, you know, when you have spare time, are you using it, you know, on Facebook and then you don't even realize the time that you had is gone? Or are you being intentional about using those spare moments to rest, rejuvenate, what have you? Self-care is a little bit bigger than that. Self-care uh, means that the way that you're intentionally taking care of yourself. And 
Um, while a lot of people think of it as bubble baths and manicures, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, it's not always just that. It can also be making those doctor's appointments that are overdue or um, making time to go visit that friend that you keep saying you want to see and never do. Um, it can be investing in um, a retreat that you've wanted to go to um, and just really spending that kind of time away. So self-care is just like everything else, very personal, but um, it's not as hard as it can feel. Uh, self-care is not selfish. It's very important for us to make sure that we um, are taking care of ourselves especially if we have others that are relying on us. As a parent, it's important that you are making sure that you fill your cup, that you get your rest. As, you know, a human who has, who knows what kind of relationships that require you to be there for them, um, the self-care can really make a big difference in how you're able to care for others. So it's never selfish and should not be considered such. It's just a matter of finding the time and making the balance to be intentional. The next area of wellness is academic and education. And not everybody has goals in this area, but that is if you were um, looking to move up in your field, um, if you were wanting to um, get a promotion or change positions, wanting to go back to school to finish <coughs> your education for that reason. Um, you know, anything within that area can be an academic or education goal, um, academic or career goal. Uh, it can be even, um, you know, drawing boundaries with your coworkers and learning how to um, say no a little more often at work, uh, so on and so forth, which brings us to the next area, which is relationships or boundaries. So this is not just spousal. This is all of the relationships, whether it's, uh, immediate family, it's parent, kid, spouse, <clears throat> coworker, whatever it may be, um, those relationships often need some boundaries put in place and that can mean saying no um saying not this time it can mean um letting them know that you don't appreciate the snide remarks and the jibs that they're constantly doing um it can mean like i said before it can mean you telling a boss no or declining a project or um Letting your coworker know that you don't appreciate her remarks um, and that she needs to stop. All of those things are boundaries and they are all hard to do when you've gone your entire life not doing them. And then uh, last but certainly, certainly not least is spiritual. And again, very personal. So it just depends on what that looks like for you. If it's, you know, spending time with a devotional or journaling or walking in nature, um, it can be praying, meditating, affirmations. It can be, um, you know, anything that you feel connected to spiritually and that you want to add into your life um, as a routine that helps fulfill your soul. So spiritually uh, can be really just about anything. And it's the important thing to remember about spirituality is that it is so very personal which means that um, we can't always let what our elders think um, dictate what we decide. Sometimes we feel, we can feel like we don't want to upset someone or disappoint someone or what have you, and that can create the cause for our decisions, which then create um, dissonance within us because it's not the decision we actually wanted to make. We made it because we felt guilty. So spirituality should never be guilty. It should be something that fulfills you. So um, when thinking of ways that you want to incorporate spirituality into your life, 
um, make sure that you're doing the things that you want to do. So those are the five areas of wellness. I am so grateful to have you guys here. Um, if you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I will be doing a more in-depth video on each of these at the on the last week. Um, and so, but if you want to add some of these into your goal, feel free to. Um, but don't feel like you need to add all of them, especially not all at once. But it is something good to think about how you can maybe add a little bit in the future as time goes on. I love y'all. I hope you have the best day.